Now it's time to talk about weighted average cost of capital. And I know what you're thinking, yo, that's whack. That's a great acronym. And I want you to remember it because this is a super important topic. So what weighted average cost of capital is, is basically considered to be the blended cost of capital across different types of debt and equity. So as we just talked about, right, a company can have debt or equity financing, and most companies have both. Now, it's not always a 50% to 50% ratio. Some will have more debt versus equity and some will have more equity versus debt. And so what weighted average cost of capital can tell us? Well, it's going to be the blended cost of capital across all the different types of debt and equity. So as you can see in the visual, it's just going to be the cost of equity plus the cost of debt. Now, this is super simplified and we'll expand on this in a bit but I just want you to understand that weighted average cost of capital is just the two components of equity and debt, add them together, and that gives us our weighted average. Now, to figure out the weighted average, that can be a little more difficult. So raise your hand if you wanna take a look at the weighted average cost of capital formula. If you're a formula person, then this probably looks completely normal. For me, I looked at it, and yes, I've worked through it enough to I now mastered it, but this isn't something I wanna use on an everyday basis. So what I have gone ahead and done is created a mental map, a four-step approach for when it comes to tackling weighted average cost of capital topics on the exam. So that way, when you get to the exam and you're sitting there and the first question that pops up is a weighted average cost of capital question, you'll go, I remember working through this mental map there's four steps. I know exactly what to do. So step one is always going to be to evaluate the capital structure. Remember, a company is going to have probably debt and equity. So we need to figure out the ratio. Sometimes they'll give us the ratio. Sometimes they'll give us the market value of debt and the market value of equity. We'll have to calculate the ratio. Sometimes they may give us the debt to equity ratio. Well, it can come in a variety of forms, but the important thing is to understand the ratio of debt to the ratio versus equity. And when we add those together, they should always equal 100%. Now in step two, we're gonna start by calculating the weighted average cost of capital specific for equity. So it's a pretty simple formula. It's gonna be the cost of equity times the ratio of equity, and that'll give us the weighted average cost of capital for equity. Now we're not gonna get into it in this module, but there are a variety of ways to figure out what a company's cost of equity is. So we'll tackle that in later modules, but for now, just know that it's gonna be the cost of equity and that's going to be multiplied by the ratio of equity to total capital, right? So that gives us the WAC for equity. Now for debt, calculating the WAC, it's very similar, except there's one extra step and that is we have to multiply by one minus the tax rate. Because remember, there is some tax advantages to debt because we can subtract that interest expense to get down to our taxable income. So WAC for debt, very similar to equity, except we have to multiply by one minus the tax rate. Step four is my favorite part because it's super easy. We just need to take the answer for step number two, which was the WAC for equity, add in the answer from step number three, which was the WAC for debt on a post-tax basis, and that gives us the combined weighted average cost of capital for the company. Now, there are a variety of ways that we can use this combined WAC to make investment or business decisions, and we'll get to that later on, but that is how you calculate the weighted average cost of capital on a total basis for the company. So the best way to make sure we understand how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital is to do an example. And I know what you're gonna do after this is go do more multiple choice questions and simulations on this topic so that you become a master of this topic. But for now, let's go ahead and calculate the weighted average cost of capital for Jazz Music Store. So we'll go ahead and trust that the question gives us the necessary information and let's just start working through our mental map, our four steps. So starting with step number one, we have to figure out the capital structure. And it tells us that Jazz has a capital structure that is 25% common equity and debt 
that is equal to 75%. So we know debt is 75%, equity is 25%. Our quick check is, is that 100%? And the answer is yes. So now we can move to step two and calculate the WAC for equity. So we just take the cost of common equity, which the question tells us is 10%, multiply it by that ratio of common equity, which is 25%, that tells us the WAC for equity is 2.5%. Now, step three, this is the WAC for debt. So we look through the question. It tells us the cost of debt is 5%. Debt is usually cheaper or has a lower cost than equity. So always keep that in mind. So the cost of debt is 5% multiplied by the ratio of debt for the total capital structure, which is 75%. And that tells us the WAC for debt before considering taxes is 3.75%. But we'll always have to remember to factor in that tax rate. So one minus the tax rate of 20%, that's 80%. So just take 3.75 times 80%. That means the WAC for debt after factoring in taxes is 3%. Now, as we move into step four, please remember what is the point of weighted average cost of capital is to give us the blended cost of capital across debt and equity. So what we have to do, add these together since we already calculated the weight. The WAC for common equity was 2.5%. That was from step two. And then the WAC for debt from step three was 3%. So what's that add together? That means the combined WAC for Jazz Music Store is 5.5%. So see, that's not too bad. We'll learn later on exactly how to use this weighted average cost of capital to make business decisions. So the last part here is focused on how to interpret the WAC. There are a variety of ways that we can use this weighted average cost of capital rate, but it's mainly used to determine whether a company should invest in a project, a business, or other types of decisions. Now, it's usually the discount rate in a net present value calculation. It could be the hurdle rate in an investment decision, those are the two most common types, but that is how we can interpret the WAC and use it. And typically, a company is going to want to have a return on a project or investment that is greater than their weighted average cost of capital, because if it's less than their weighted average cost of capital, that means they're actually losing value on their equity. So always, always, always remember that if they're contemplating a project or an investment, that the return on that project or investment should be greater than the weighted average cost of capital for the company. So that is the key thing to remember. We'll practice this more as we do multiple choice questions and simulations, but I just wanted to give you a basis on how to interpret the weighted average cost of capital, because when it comes to anything, you have to understand the why. Why is this important and why does the CPA exam want me to know this information?